Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Greeting of peace, excellencies, panelists, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. Let me first of all thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak to you on a subject which I think it is very important to me that is people and society. The word people and society is a very common word. We use them almost every day but with a limited meaning and also a very siloed way of looking at it. We talk about people normally in a very confined way to describe a particular group or a particular nation and so is society. But now as we go to the pandemic we find that this word people and society has a deeper and a larger meaning because we are trying to get humanity and people working together as one whole rather than a splintering groups in the context of people and society. And therefore, never before, I think, we need now to contemplate on what this word people and society means to us. And I think it is time for us to now rethink of how we actually want to describe this word people and society as a larger whole greater than the sum its part. We do not bother now where you come from, who you are in terms of your uh, profile or your nationalities or your race or your color. We want to see us as one human being in a context of humanity and humankind. This, I think, what the challenge is today. How do you transit from that small myopic understanding of people and society into a larger one. If we want to survive the pandemic that demands us to work together as a group of people for our own survival on this planet Earth, given the kind of challenges that we are meeting in the future. Therefore, I would like to take you into this idea of how do we readdress some of this issue in the context of our mindset. We need to now look at the bigger picture of how we have arrived into this smaller understanding of what people and society is all about. The government of Malaysia today is trying to promote the idea of family beyond just the nuclear family, but a larger family of society, the larger family of nations, and the larger family of the world, if not the globe, as it were. In my university, we use the term rahmatan lil alamin, meaning mercy to all. In other words, it is not just about the human being, but also the human, the non-human life at the same time. All creations all around us is part of this mercy that we need to go, we need to work together and get our things going as far as the world is concerned. So this is the, the, the time for us to reconceptualize this and think about how do we actually decolonize our mind to a certain extent that this idea of barricading or putting barriers or dividing and ruling people just because for the sake of a small uh, idea or ideology has put us way back when we come to pandemics and challenges like we see today. And therefore, it's time, I think, to look at how we need to move on forward. For this, I've got a suggestion. And my suggestion is to let's be wiser. Be wiser means how do we actually transcend all the failures of the past and create a better future. We are called as homo sapiens, translated from Latin to be the wiser one. And therefore, we need to act wisely to make sure that our future is well taken care, that the future generations have got a, a real future ahead of them, and we need to begin today. In other words, from my point of view, we need to start literally thinking how to be wise it through a system that actually promotes this kind of a thinking, be it education, be it health, particularly in the context of economics and also politics, rather than looking at a very small ideological perspective, how do you broaden this to include all humanity, regardless who you are or where you are or where you come from. And therefore, this being wiser has also another metaphorical means as far as I'm concerned. The word W is about well-being. I think well-being is now being contested like never before. All of us are talking about well-being, not only well-being in a small section like 
economic well-being or political well-being. We want to talk about the holistic well-being, recognizing that the human beings are made of complexities that mean many uh, items that actually represent us spiritually, emotionally, physically, intellectually, and what have you. Unless and until we can balance all this, we will not be that wiser human being that we talked about that could protect our well-being, our wellness, and so on and so forth. So this is the challenge I think that we need to confront today when we talk about W is also about being holistic or wholeness in the sense that everything needs to be compressed together in a context that all of us can live as a complete human being rather than this terminology of human capital that talks about just one section of the human being but not being human at the same time. These are challenges that I hope we can think about. How do you actually put this into perspective so that the moving forward, our education, the system that looks after us, is looking after us as a complete human being rather than a segmented or a reductionist human being the way we see it today. The word I, therefore, talks about inclusiveness, talks about ingenuity, talks about intangibility. In other words, these are dimensions that we have not taken up seriously, particularly in trying to understand the intangibles. Most of the things that we talk today is something that we can count. And things that can count sometimes are not counted. But things that you cannot count sometimes is more important than things that you can count. Spirituality, for example, one of the dimensions that I think is now being talked about in the context of the pandemic, particularly when there's lockdown. How do you get in touch with yourself? And that's the S that I talked to you about. Spirituality is the vertical dimension that we have often forgotten because we are so preoccupied with the horizontal dimension of economics, politics, and things that can be counted. And we forgot how do you actually now move and transact into the vertical dimension that has something else which is beyond just counting and also numbers. We need to now learn how to measure the unmeasurable. And this is something that I think is a challenge, is a challenge of the future that we need now to come to terms with. And I'm sure as a wiser human being, we need to do this. S also stands for Sajatra, the local meaning of what spirituality is all about, and even beyond spirituality, including wellness, including happiness, and include all the things that gives us a kind of a positive feeling. These are words that have been used for many centuries before, but now has been forgotten because we cannot, quote unquote, count it as it were. We want to bring this back. And in the context of our own educational philosophy, we talk about kesejahtera andiri. And that is the kind of product that we want to produce at the end of the day through education, that people are well balanced in their well-being and so on and so forth. Now, the, the, the next one is E. It's about equity. It's about equitability. It's about egalitarianism. All these, I think, will be the end product of what we are talking today when you talk about Charity to justice is about arriving at all these points. How do you make this a reality as far as uh, uh, moving forward is concerned? So these are issues that I think which is important for us to actually contextualize when we talk about what the future is all about for human being, for humanity, and for humankind at the same time. The last alphabet is R, is about resiliency. I think many of us are confronted with issues that we do not know how to respond. We do not know how to cope, particularly, in the, do, particularly from the emotional point of view. We see this when there's lockdown, particularly in university, when the students are left on their own, they do not know how to respond. They do not know how to behave because they have not been trained to respond and to be resilient as far as emotions, as far as mental health is concerned. And therefore, we are now are confronted with another, another possible pandemic, which is the mental health. If we don't take care of this, we do not learn how to be resilient as far as human being is concerned, then I think we are all down to a very bleak future, if not for extinction at the same time. So all these, I think, are culminations of what we need to think about. And I hope the panel do have time to elaborate on some of this and to make sure at the end of the day, Yajasan Hasana will present another mode of thinking beyond just the ordinary, another mode of thinking post-COVID as it were, 
that we need to change the structure, not just change parts of it, but the whole structure I think, needs to be changed, the whole concept needs to be changed, and the, not just resetting, but perhaps to be transformative at the same time. This word transformative has been used in the 12th Malaysia plan. They have got also words like game changer. All these, I hope, are not just words, but we can translate it into meaning so that the future will be to we will totally transformative and a game changer at that point. So I'd like to thank you for your attention. I hope this will be a small contribution. And I would like to uh, recognize in trying to move from charity to justice, a person that has been instrumental in my life, that is uh, the former uh, president of CAP, uh, the late SM Idris, who have been exemplary in trying to move us forward into the future. And I hope we will live to be inspired by his doings so that we can also create the future for ourselves and the generations to come. Wabilahi Taufiq wa Hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Thank you very much.